I like this hydraulic press fine, but I'd very much like to know just how much force I'm applying. So what I plan to do is install this 5,000 PSI hydraulic gauge onto the jack, and then once I calculate the actual inside diameter of the piston, I can get a really good approximation of how many pounds of force is being exerted. First step is to drain the jack. Each jack is different, but as you can see, normally they will have a oil fill level. Here's a red one up here, very similar thing. So first off, I gotta pull that and drain it into a clean container so that I can reuse it. Once you've drained the fluid, it's now time to get the jack apart. Now, unless you have a welded jack, and one of the reasons why I'm not using this red one is it's actually a welded jack. Unless you have a welded jack, it'll come apart in two places. It'll come apart right here, and it'll come apart right here. But they both could be really, really hard to get out. Uh, starting with a newer jack, obviously, is going to make this considerably easier. Put the base in the vise, big pipe wrench, big channel locks, big something. Go ahead and unscrew this. Once you get this out, the piston assembly should lift out of it. This is the hydraulic fluid reservoir, and that comes off next. Now it took a very large pipe wrench and quite a bit of force to break it loose. But it came. This is the next piece of pipe that has to unscrew. This is the actual barrel for the piston. When you get that apart, you're going to want to carefully measure the inside diameter so that you know just how big it is. It'll let you calculate the surface area and figure out what sort of formula you're going to need to get your gauge accurate. So next, pull that inside pin. Now we're down to our key jack components. Okay, so this is the actual pump right here. And the oil comes up out of that hole right down in there. And that activates the piston. And the piston rides inside of here. So when you take it apart, it's all right to put marks on this shaft. You put marks on this shaft, and it's ruined absolutely ruined. But this shaft, unscrewing it, and it took even more force than cracking the top did. This is the actual piston shaft. This is what it slides up and down. In the base you have the seals. None of this needs to come apart, though it all does need to go into your solvent tank to be cleaned up. And this part of the jack is nothing more than a hydraulic reservoir. This is where the fluid rises when the piston is down. And then as you pump the piston up, that fluid drops. If you want to make a jack that is reversible, that is, that you can pump while upside down, that can be done. It can be done very simply. You need to tap into this line here, which is the suction line. And when you tap into that line there, and you're going to put a nipple, and you're going to go the appropriate distance down with a little piece of hose, so that when the jack is upside down, then it can still suck fluid, because that's your main problem. Next step, really, i got to clean this up. We have to pull the ball return, we have to pull the pump assembly out, and uh, get ready to do some drilling down in there. So now I've got all the check and ball return valves pulled out of it. And uh, these are, are different for every jack, and you just got to be careful and try to catch what can come flying out of the hole. If you're not careful. A lot of modern jacks will have them behind the bleed valve. This one had them in the pocket there. So it had a small valve, which is uh, basically a steel ball in a seat in there. On top of that it had a spring. On top of that it had the large ball. And then it had a rubber cup. And they all go together inside something like this. You're going to have something very similar. And if you shoot it across the shop, and you hear little bits and pieces fall behind the corners, um, you're going to have to buy a new jack. So be careful. So now we're ready for the milling process. So what's got to be done is we've got to tap into the center of this part here. 
but if you touch with your drill bit that edge or any of these threads again the jack is ruined so there's not a whole lot of wiggle room in there but we're going to have to find a way to go in through the side here breach it in the center and then drill and tap this out for your gauge Take some careful measurements, do some careful planning, and make sure you get this right. The other opportunity is to go straight to the bottom, which isn't an option in this press. Alright, so the milling is complete. I didn't have a lot of base thickness to work with here, so I had to be very precise. I came down just below the edge of that lip. I went inside with a, a larger hole, big enough that I can then tap it out for a quarter inch pipe and then using a tiny drill bit I actually made my incision. It, you know it doesn't have to be a big hole it can be hardly larger than a pinhole and the gauge will still read pressure. That about an eighth inch hole plenty. It's bigger than the hole it's in the bottom of the gauge anyways. So this should work perfectly. Now I just need to tap this and give the whole thing a very thorough cleaning because you get those metal filings in there and it will shorten the life of your jack. All right, basically the operation is complete. I've got my threads in there. I've taken the time to very carefully clean everything. Well, it's somehow already got dog hair in it. Very carefully clean everything. Now I just need to uh, put it all back together. It can't be too clean. Take your time. Make sure everything is spotless because any dirt in there and it'll just it'll cause you nothing but troubles. Remember before you assemble it to take the time to measure the bottom of the piston. And it's not this diameter here. It's the diameter at the very base, the fatter diameter. So I know that this is 1.245. And that's that's the number I'll enter in for my calculations to figure out exactly how many pounds of force is being exerted. 1.245. Again, if, if you measure this, you'll be off, and you'll be off fairly substantially. So it needs to be the base here. Reassemble the jack the way you took it apart. It's a good idea before you reattach the piston here to put a little oil on that seal. Well, none of this footage is ever going to be used. You know how tight it was when you took it apart. It's got to be pretty tight when you put it back together. And there it is. All complete. I just need to refill the bottle. It might take some time and effort to get that to properly bleed. Remember, this is hydraulic stuff, so you know there can be quite a bit of, uh, of pressure on it. And water pipe might not hold so you should look into do using uh, the proper stuff. I'm going to go ahead and bleed this and then test it out. I hope you have good luck with your own jack and thanks for watching. Alright, so here it is all uh, bled up. I had some difficulty bleeding it and there's still some air in there somewhere. The handle's a little spongy. With luck it'll work itself out on its own. But now, when I add the pressure we bring her up, so the gauge, it's just pressing on a bar right now, but the gauge is at 2,000, and if I want to know how much weight that is, I have to multiply by 1.23. So that's actually putting 2,400 pounds of, of actual measurable force on that. I wish my piston would have been a nice round number. One would have been nice. One and a half would have been okay. 1.23, at least it's easy to remember. So, again, good luck with your project. I hope it all works out for you.